Okay, I got the Crossman 2100 out, and what I did before I started is I oiled the pad with a couple drops of oil. That's usually what I do before I do any sets at all. Um, the scope here is uh, 6 to 24 power. I set it on 12. Uh, the difference between the 9 power and the 12 power isn't really that much noticeable. Not that I can tell when I do my groups. Uh, the pellets that I'm using here are the 8.18 grain Finale Match. These are the 4.51 millimeter. So anyway, this uh, barrel had just been cleaned before I came out. And uh, with some pellets, you might have to follow the barrel up to get them to shoot better. So you have to do a little experiment on pellets. That's why you do a lot of sets. But So let's go down there and see at 25 yards what we got for a group. I took 10 shots. Took advantage of the calm weather here. Because when you're doing a 25 yard shot you want the you want no wind at all so you can tell what the accuracy is from bench now inside I got 15 yards and there's nothing to worry about there's no wind or anything inside but out here the best time you can do this is later in the evening when the wind has died down so I'm going to show you my aim point and then I'll show you the where the shots ended up. This is a 10 shot grouping and what this what this dot is here that's about an inch that dot there but um, what you'll know about the Crossman 2100 is when you have it on bench or when you have it on your uh, setup or whatever it kind of rocks a little bit because it's kind of rounded on that pump part kind of rocks a little so your shots can kind of wander in this direction sometime if you're not steady enough I just took a, a few quick shots here but that's uh I don't know if I could fit that in there but that's three quarters of an inch center to center right there and if you took uh, if you took the majority of them you're looking at uh, about a half inch so if you don't want to count them two right there, it looks like about a half inch or something like that to three quarters, which isn't too bad. And then this was a bad shot right here. Um, this one I could see kind of twisting and almost like it wanted to tumble. So I could actually see that through my scope. But I wanted to show you this 10 shot group because of the fact that when you're doing a 10 shot group now, you have more possibility of that group widening up. But as I started taking shots, I didn't have this over here. So all of them were piling up within within a half inch, which is really good. So uh, that's why you want to go through a procedure before you shoot. You want to find out should you clean the barrel or should you not clean the barrel. And the only way you can find that out is by doing a lot of sets. And the other thing is your routine before you start a um, couple drops of oil on that pad so the pupper gets oil and stuff like that you want to make sure you do that and then it's all up to your bench rest steadiness and stuff like that so there was my aim point and I intentionally want it to drop or go high because once you shoot your aim point you don't have an aim point anymore so if this blue dot was here I wouldn't have any reference so what you want to purposely do is you want to purposely shoot away from your aim point. So the aim point's here, and these are where the round showed up. So it just proves consistency of the H&N line match grade pellets. These are the ones in the can, the 8.18 grain. But uh, the JSB ones will do just fine, too. And what I'm going to do is have some videos because I've got... Uh, some of my match grade wad cutters coming in because I shot them all up this year so <laughs> I went crazy and just started using them for planking because I loved how accurate they were so <clears throat> I don't know if I told you or not but uh, 
I did pump it up three times for this pellet here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, I probably could do something about it myself, but when you're shooting at bench with the DZ 953 or the DZ 753, it fits real nice in that slot. But the crossman here is rounded, so what happens is when you're aiming and you're trying to stay steady, she kind of goes like this a little bit. If you're not careful, it'll, it'll rock. It'll cant a little bit. So uh, I could take that rubber piece off and design something to, to brace this down better because the more steady the more steady you have the bench rest set up, the more you can prove the accuracy. And that's the whole reason for bench presses, or not bench press, <laughs> bench rest is because of uh, making sure that everything's perfectly steady and you have ideal conditions so that you can prove the accuracy. Now on Pyramid Air online, they said the accuracy on this was 0.59 at 10 meters and that's that's ridiculous it's a it's a lot more accurate than that it's more like 0.5 for a five shot group at 25 yards which is a half inch I mean um, and that just goes to show when you're doing testing you have to be careful how you're testing you know you have to make sure you oil your pad you have to make sure you find out if the pellet likes to be fouled or not but ultimately the best way to test is doing sets because when you start off with a clean barrel it might not shoot as well until you get into the second or the third set so that's up to you to experiment but typically what I do is if I come out here like say tomorrow I'll just give her a couple small drops it doesn't take much you don't have to over lube it or anything but uh, just give her a couple drops to get her started and back and running again. So anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. These are the ones I've got left here that I'm going to use on the metal silhouette targets. But there's really a lot of truth in that you get what you pay for. The only things that you don't get what you pay for is some of them performance alloy pellets, some lightweight ones from Gamo and stuff like that. Um, they got some bad seams and some weight issues and dents and stuff like that. But not only that, alloy pellets weren't really meant for long range. They were meant for short range, and they were meant for boosting velocity. If you have a hunting type pellet like a blue flame gamo, now that's that's an okay pellet for hunting, but you have to have the right velocity if you're shooting a velocity of 600 feet per second. When you're hunting with that round, it's not going to open up like it should. So them rounds are meant for a thousand feet per second or more, but limited to, to just your short range because of the accuracy and because of the fact that they might be going mock speeds and they might start to tumble. So that's why they're only meant for close range. So when it all comes down to it, for the, the majority of light pellets are for, for short range, like zero to 15 yards or something like that but you can get uh, some really high quality match grade ones like the R10s 7 grain and even the 5.5 Predator wad cutter pellets do really good and also your field target 5.56's and your uh, 6.48's made by Beeman or uh, H&M them do really good because of the quality and the research that went into it to make them have a decent ballistic coefficient for their weight. Normally light pellets don't have a good ballistic coefficient, but they've managed to make some of them alloy ones, the really good ones, uh, you know, have a higher ballistic coefficient. Not as much as a lead pellet, but but uh, just a little bit uh, down from a lead pellet, so that's good. But anyway, had her on 12 power, so this one will go up to 24. And like I said, I've tried it on 9 with this thing last year and stuff. I had a 9 power and I was doing the same kind of groups. So, so the magnification doesn't always help. Sometimes it can hinder you because when you're looking 
when you're looking through your scope here, if you have too high of magnification, what will happen is two things. Number one is you'll hesitate because your crosshair is more sensitive to movement because of the fact that you've magnified it so many times. So you're going to look through the crosshair, it's going to go like this. So you'll hesitate to take your shots rather than taking them because you're over magnifying the target. Um, the other thing is the shades of black when you look through here your eye should be centered and if you see a bunch of shades of black uh, on the sides here that could cause parallax error so you want to make sure you're centered and you want to make sure that that it's all clear all around the whole dimension of this uh, bell right here if you have a little shade of black creeping in on you from one side or the other take your time put your eye in another spot and make sure the shades don't creep from side to side. Now that happens with really high magnification. Like if I put this on 24, I'd look through it, and what would happen is my eye, even if I got my eye centered, now I've got the crosshair going back and forth like that because it's so magnified, it's so sensitive, that even your heartbeat will go like this. You can see your heartbeat and stuff. So no need to over magnify I've done tests with 9 power versus 24 power and I've gotten some of the same results sometimes um, sometimes over magnification I've gotten worse results because of the simple fact that you hesitate and you get frustrated because you want to focus on a smaller point that you forget uh, that you have to eventually take that shot you know, you're holding your breath. You can only hold your breath for a second or two. And if you keep holding it and stuff, your heartbeat's going to transfer into the rifle and all kinds of stuff. So, And that's one of the reasons why I got a flat surface here instead of uh, like a lead sled. And guys that use lead sleds online, you're going to be less accurate because of the fact that uh, it goes down into a hard pocket. Even if it's got rubber or something, it goes down into a place that... That isn't going to cushion the rifle very well. So like a seat cushion like this, you can get your hands where you need them. You can uh, steady the rifle and stuff like that. So you get some better results this way. But anyway, thank you very much for watching.